What is going on guys? Welcome to a new video where today we've got some exciting things to talk about. I'm sure you're probably aware WWDC just recently happened and they have announced a lot of great things. The thing that I'm most excited about is the iOS 14. Now I did go ahead and download the beta on my older phone, which I use for reviews. Since it is a beta, you really don't want to put that on your main device. It's still in testing. It's still being developed. I mean, you can, that's up to you. But I went ahead and installed it on my older device and I'm just going to talk about some of my favorite features and some things that I found really, really fascinating and that I'm actually very excited about. Apple has been proving to show that they care about your privacy and your security, so they've added a lot new features in iOS 14 that will help you be aware of what you're sharing and what's actually happening on your device. So something that they've added is this little light at the top. So as you can see, there's this light right now. This is a yellowish orange because I'm screen recording, my microphone is on. On. So that's letting me know that something in my phone, on my phone, is using my microphone right now. And I switch it around, which obviously is going to be my camera. There's that green light showing that my camera is actually being used. Another thing they've added is for your location. If you go into locations, okay, let's say all trails. I probably would want all trails to have my precise location, but if I didn't, I could turn that off and it would just use an approximate location instead of my precise location. Another thing Apple is doing is mandating that app developers disclose what information might actually be able to be obtained from the app. So now there's just gonna be a little disclosure saying, hey, this is what we might be able to collect from you. And I think that that's really, really great. And all these steps for our security and privacy is great. But what about all of our information that is already out there on the web. Now this portion of the video is sponsored by mine and I'm gonna walk you guys through a really quick process so that you can be in control of your data and reclaim anything that you might not want out there on the web or in apps. All you do is go to samemind.com. You can then sign in with Google or Microsoft. And here it will give you a summary of basically everything that that email is attached to. So as you guys can see here, I have 322 companies holding my data. 68 of them are financial. 181 have my identity data. And that's kind of scary. So let's see who has my financial data. It's a lot. Lulu's. I don't even shop there anymore. I'm gonna click that, reclaim my information, send the request, double check my email, hit send. And just like that, they are processing my reclaim request. I don't have to do anything and all of my information will be mine again. All you have to do is go to samemind.com. There will be a link in the description. Right now it is free, so I would take advantage of that. There is gonna be a subscription service soon. So if you wanna get in while it's free, check out that link below and reclaim your data because it is very, very, very important. Okay, now we're gonna go back to the iOS features. Another thing that I'm excited about are the iMessage updates. Now here is the normal text thread. And as you guys can see, you can pin messages to the top, which is really cool because I pretty much talk to like, well, I'm in a lot of group chats, but I basically talk to like my family, my sister, you know, friends. I've got like probably five to 10 people that I talk to every single day. And right now I'm in a group chat with my sister and Farouk. I have pinned them to the top. The last message that was sent in the group chat was Farouk saying that he's listening to our podcast now. So now we have inline replies where you can click on it and you can see the inline replies. This is really important to me because I, like I said, I'm in so many group chats with so many people it gets messy. So in order to do mentions in group chats, I was having some trouble. I'm like, why isn't it tagging my sister Justine? And it's because I have a poo emoji on her name. I didn't have any trouble tagging Farouk. Basically you do it like you can add the at. So I'd say hi, it will then turn blue. If I want to say hi to my sister, Justine with the poo. And it will then mention them and they will get a notification. Another feature that I'm very excited about and you might already see here on my home screen are the widgets. Now in order to change widgets, you hold down, do a long press, edit home screen. Now up here I've already added two widgets. I added fitness as well as podcasts. So I'm just gonna exit out of that, I hit done. Uh, my watch is not connected to this phone, so I don't have any um, activity, but I've added the widget of the fitness as well as the podcast. Uh, shameless plug, my sister and I have a podcast, so I will link that in the description below as well. You can also stack the widgets and swipe between them. I only have two right now. Another thing that was new was the app library. I'm not so sure if I'm gonna use that as much. It's nice that it kind of organizes everything for me, but I will say something that I do like is the new feature for swiping. You can just hold it down and go between your pages. Once again, hold the edit home screen, tap the buttons. You can either dim your other pages or you can have them visible. I have chosen to 
hide all of them so that I don't have a million things that I'm flipping back and forth in between. So we talked about widgets, we talked about iMessages. Let's talk about picture in picture. If you're like me, I'm obsessed with watching shows. I will carry around my phone, my laptop, my Surface Pro X. I will carry around all of my devices depending on which I'm watching the show on. So now that picture in picture is a thing, it's nice because you can multitask. So say we wanna watch something on Apple TV Plus, um, let's go with the morning show, always a classic. So that show is so good. You can then just hit this picture in picture. You can go back to what you're doing. Maybe I wanna browse YouTube while also watching the show. Maybe I wanna check the weather. You know, depending on what I wanna do, you can still watch your show. If you swipe it away, the audio still will be there, which is really nice. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm very, very excited for picture in picture. I believe it is gonna work with a bunch of third-party apps as well. Right now, it definitely works with Apple TV. I've tried a few other browsers and it wasn't working, but this is still the beta. So that's a start. And then you just hit the X and it'll go away. <laughs> we also have the new Siri, which you can hold in and it just pops up right at the bottom. Hi Siri. Hello. Apple has also been really good with their accessibility features. Now, something that is new is the double tap on the back of the phone. You can either double tap or triple tap. So in accessibility, if you go to touch and you scroll all the way down to back tap, Right now I have on double tap, which will take me home, triple tap, which will spotlight. So all I do, double tap the back, and it takes me back to my home screen. Now if I triple tap, it will then pull up the spotlight, which I searched for my Apple TV, which was my last thing. Now you can obviously customize that to whichever would be appropriate for you. I just think that a nice double tap home, and it took me home. Another thing I tested out in the accessibility was the sound recognition. So in accessibility, you can then go to sound recognition. I have it turned on, and for sounds, I have dog, because I have a dog, doorbell, and water running. Get him, buddy, get him! <laughs> Maddie, you were recognized. This is a really, really good accessibility feature. So if you're on your phone and this is able to alert you that a fire alarm or a smoke alarm or your animal is barking, that's just this nice little added feature that potentially could save your life. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of other ways. For me, thankfully, I've never had to worry about this, but I turned it on just to kind of test it out and when I knew the dog was gonna bark, so I was just kind of waiting for the dog to bark and I caught him in the act. But um, Apple has always done an incredible job with the accessibility and I'd love to see all of the updates that they're doing. Which Magnifier was something that I also, I think it came out with iOS 13, but Magnifier I have added. There's also a shortcut you can add where you can change what the triple tap button is the accessibility. I have it set so it opens up the Magnifier. Triple click and it will then open up the magnifier. You can zoom in and it's honestly pretty clear, but having this feature is, is a really, really nice little touch. Like, look at that, it's so neat. Another thing, I travel a lot, or I used to travel a lot. Unfortunately, I only speak one language and it makes traveling kind of difficult. How many times have there been accidents where I was in Austria and I may have shut down an entire gate at an airport or I hit an emergency button. We're not gonna talk about that. But with Apple's new Translate app, it's supposed to hopefully ease any translation problems that you might have. It has, I believe, 11 languages right now. So say I am somewhere and I wanna ask, where is the bathroom? Where is the bathroom? It can then say, donde esta el baño, which actually I knew that one. And what's also really cool is if you want to click on one, so say I clicked on baño, it will then pull up the definition and give you all types of information about the bathroom. So those are just some of the top features of iOS 14 that I found very interesting. Definitely most excited about the messages as well as the picture in picture. Everything else is just like a nice little bonus. The widgets is actually something I didn't think I was gonna need. And obviously all of the new privacy features are really, really good and really practical. Once again, thank you so much to Mine for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out SaveMine.com. There's a link in the description. It's very important that we know where our information is being stored on the internet. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Let me know what your favorite features are of iOS 14. And I will see you guys again soon for a new video.